our Heavenly Father, where could we go but to the Lord? Father, our feathers are definitely ruffled. We have, everything has changed in our lives throughout this world. Lord, but the Lord, he does not change. You do not change. And your word does not change. I ask you to help me with this message. Lord, I have, um, I need your spirit, your guidance, your calming assurance. I need it in a desperate way, Lord. Help me, I pray, Lord to bring meat in due season. Lord, the word for this moment, Lord, what the Spirit is saying to the churches. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I don't know how many uh, remember the old, uh, it was an advertising slogan that was started in the early 90s, I think around 1993. And it went on for about, about 20 years. Got milk. You know, for, it was a promotion. Some of you might not even remember that. But, but and, and all the commercials, it was something the person would be eating. And all of a sudden, like cookies, and, and, and they go to grab and the milk carton's empty. And it's like, then this, the voice comes out and says, got milk? But I was thinking about, as we go into the scriptures, about the parable of the ten virgins and about how they, that some took oil with them, an extra flask of oil, and the others didn't. And then they began to run out. And is this not a wonderful sign? Look at the two candles, which, by the way, they are oil. They're not actually wax candles. But one's run out and the other. And I didn't even do that. But um, as I've said before, when, when, whenever you read a scripture, and I know you know this, you need to look at what's happening before that passage and what happens after that. But the, the, um, the parable of the ten virgins Matthew, is found in Matthew 25, but this is all of these. There, there's a couple parables after this that he gives, the ones of the, the par parable of the talents and then the parable of the sheep and the goats. But this, all of those are all in answer to a question that was asked Jesus right as he was, um, he was coming out of the temple and they all started to look at the buildings and point them out to Jesus, what beautiful buildings these are. And that's when Jesus said, you see these? He said, I'm telling you, not one stone is gonna be left on top of, the, of each other. And then they, they, they asked him, what's gonna be the sign of your coming again? And you know, they were wanting to know, what, what's it gonna be like? What do we look for? And so he began to give this um, in Matthew 24, and I'd mentioned this the last time I preached, which, by the way, I feel like the whole world's changed in just the two weeks that, that, that since the last time I preached. But in Matthew 24 is the greatest um, uh, um, speech or, or uh, dissertation in the Bible about what's going to happen at the end. And what it's going to be like. And this is through Jesus himself. But so he begins, and I know you've heard a lot of these about, they'll be hearing about wars and rumors of wars and all these different terrible things that are going to be happening. People's hearts are going to be failing them because of fear. And man, that, that is such an ominous feeling, isn't it? When you go out to the store and all of a sudden, there's no, the joy is dried up. You know, it's just, there's this scariness. And, but all these things, and, and um, talking about the sun being darkened and all these um, tough things. And then I'd like to look, right before he gives this parable of the virgins, 
Um, I'd like to look what he says right before that. So I've asked um, Darren uh, to, to put it up on the screen. And this is Matthew 24, 45 through 51. And that leads right up to that famous parable. Or did I start with 40? All right, 45. And I love the way Jesus does this, where he'll, he doesn't just answer questions. He, he, he tells you how to be, how to be. Who then is the faithful and sensible slave whom his master put in charge of his household to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that evil slave says in his heart, my master is not coming for a long time and begins to beat his fellow slaves and eat and drink with drunkards, the master of that slave will not come, on, I mean will come on a day when he does not expect him and, and an hour which he does not know and will cut him in pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And now we'll go ahead and continue on with the parable. Then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the prudent took oil in flasks along with their lamps. Now while the bridegroom was delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight there was a shout, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the prudent, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the prudent answered, No, there will not be enough for us and you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Later, the other virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Be on the alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour. These are the words of God for the people of God. Amen. Was I hearing music while I was? Oh, that's the, the, the thing up there. Okay, that's what. I thought, man, the angels are even playing. <laughs> no, that's somebody's phone. <laughs> Never mind. Amen. Oh, for a disclaimer, as um, growing up up north, when I say oil, it's oil. J just in case you, you didn't know, when I say oil, I'm actually meaning they took no oil with them, like change your oil. That kind of thing. So there's a little bit of a language barrier that we have to, to have to do here. But the the, the um, this this parable, the Jewish custom was in those days for a nighttime wedding or for the day. What what would happen is that the groom would go to the bride's house and get the, get the bride, and then they would come back to. The, the, the groom's house or to his father's house and they'd have the big wedding feast and, and the, wedding, the wedding party. And um, the maidens, basically the ten virgins, were like the bridesmaids. And what they would do, um, especially, of course, for the evening ones, they would light lamps and they would light the way near the, the groom's house. And so... When, when the groom and the bride were approaching, the lamps would be burning, and then they would all go in, and they would all go in, and then the, the, they'd shut the door behind them, and then the wedding feast would begin. And so um, 
they would usually light the, light, the lamps. There's kind of a, they don't know whether they're actually the torches or else the clay lamps. But in either way, they would light them at dusk. And so they would begin to wait. Now, so you can tell that it was quite a long wait because it said at midnight, here comes the groom. And I was thinking about, think of the bride and the bridegroom. I mean, it's their big deal. It's their big day. And as they're getting close, what if the people weren't waiting and it was all dark? It's like, wait a minute. Where, where are the people that are supposed to be announcing? Here comes the bride and the groom. Of course, back then, those days, it was the groom got all the... the, the the, uh, the accolades. But so it was an important job that they had. So now this parable is not aimed at the believers and the unbelievers. It's aimed at, to describe the difference between the wise and the, or the prudent and the foolish ones. The foolish took no oil with them, no extra flask, but the, but the wise ones did. And so here the delay had come, and so the time was finally there, and so soon as the, um, the shout came, here he comes, they all trimmed their lamps, got them ready to go, and their first reaction was, give me some of your, your oil. Ours are going out. And they said, no. And it wasn't a selfish thing. There wasn't enough for you and for me and for us. Go and buy some for yourself. So then they all headed out. Now, I don't know if, um, where, if they had any um, gold mine stores nearby or where, wherever you went to get some oil, especially at midnight. But think of the panic in their, in their own hearts as they headed off. That must have been a terrible thing. You know, no one, and head off into the darkness, try to find some, some oil so to, to, and try to get back. It must have been a terrible, terrible time for them. And then they come back, and then they begin to knock. Lord, Lord, open up to us. And then comes the voice, I never knew you. And so you, it has, um, it gives a contrast between the wise and the foolish. Now, this is what we have to do. We have to be wise in this time. We have to be prepared. And so let's look at what is oil. What what. He said they took no oil. When you think of oil, a lamp is no good without any oil. Or like a flashlight with no batteries. My brother um, in West Virginia, they, they had some stories about, they used to go caving a lot. I mean, these guys, when they'd go caving, they'd go out and there were little openings in the mountains, like in West Virginia and Virginia where only these country folks knew where they were, and they would go into these holes and begin to go back and explore these caves. And if you've ever been in a cave where they turn off the light, I mean, you've never seen black, blackness like that. But he's had a couple of stories of when their batteries, would the lights begin to flicker. And they, they, their one time was very serious, and they were lost and their light was just beginning to flicker. And, and, you know, I just hated to even hear that story because nobody even knew where they were. They would have never found them. Someone would have found a skeleton years later on. But that, that feeling of not having oil or not having a battery or whatever your source is, but we have to have oil, and the oil is really Jesus Christ himself. We have to be plugged in. We have to be dipped in the oil. And all, all a lamp does, it just absorbs, absorbs the oil and then gives off the fumes, and they light that, 
and you are basically a channel of Jesus Christ. And that's what we have to be as, as wise people. We have to be plugged in. Think of the, the, foolish, the foolish virgins. They didn't bring any extra oil. They just thought, well, you know, every other wedding I've been to is just, you know, as long as you got one, one, one lamp full, he ought to be here any moment. So, so their, their faith, they hadn't thought about what if he doesn't come right away? What if he doesn't come right away? And you, we see that, that warning throughout Scripture. Uh, we see it in the parable of the seed, the seed that fell on the shallow ground and had no root. Then soon as the trouble came, it immediately withered because there was no root. And that's why we have to make sure as Christians that we are dipped into the source, which is Jesus Christ, and the, the source of his word and those sort of things. We have to have our, our hearts built on the foundation. We have to be wise and not fools. Wisdom. What are some of the, the, the um, and I put some of the scriptures in the bulletin, but the wise people have understanding. In Ephesians 5.17, it says the, do not be foolish. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. The fool does not understand God's will. Think of what's happening now. We have so much fear and so much um, um, doubt and turmoil going on, but we have to understand what the will of the Lord is. If we have understanding, that means everything. Understanding takes effort. I know in school, there is something about when you actually get it. I, you students, I, I, I know, like say for a, a foreign language, where I, was, I took some Spanish, I was able to write it, I was able to read it, but I didn't understand it. You know, I didn't really get it. I always hated like in some of the math problems, the ones where you had to really think. You know, it, it's one thing to just understand the formulas. You plug this in, you plug that. But those word problems, those were always the ones where you actually had to get a grip on it. Folks, we have to have an understanding of what the word of God is, of what God is doing. The wise have an understanding, but the foolish have no understanding. They don't get it. And so when, when, when the trouble comes, when the trials come, the ones that have have the oil, they'll have the light, and they'll be able to emit the light. They'll be able to emit, emit the light. Oil costs. Remember how they said, give us some of your oil, and they said, go and buy some for yourselves. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, preacher, as they always said. I thought salvation was free. I thought it was the free gift of God. It is free but it costs you everything. It will cost you all of your life. Remember, Jesus, he gives those parables about, about the treasure hidden in the field, which a man found, and then he, he, he hid it again, and he sold everything that he had, and he went and he purchased the field. Or it's like it said, Jesus likened the kingdom of God to a merchant seeking fine pearls, and he finds one and he goes and he sells everything he has and he purchases that pearl. And that, so we have to buy oil and we do that by, by giving everything that we have in our lives, surrendering our time to God, our focus. So what are you going to do? in the midst of, of all these quarantines. You're going to be shut up at home. You're going to, sooner or later, you're going to run out of TV shows to watch or, or games to play. How about digging in into the seeking understanding, seeking God's word 
and getting prepared. Now is the time that we have to absorb the word of God and get that understanding and purchase the oil now while we can. Remember the other ones that didn't have the oil? They said, you need to go get some. Your oil is not good enough for me. You might have understanding, but I can't cling to you. Mama's faith, daddy's faith, grandpa's faith. Why? My granddaddy went to this church or my whatever. Their oil is not enough for you. Your faith is not enough for me. There's not going to be any stowaways coming into the kingdom of heaven. There's a, all right, you know, there'll be a lot of people jump on board. Remember the parable where uh, the, the, the guy that comes into the wedding feast and he didn't have the clothes. He didn't have the wedding clothes that were provided that people were supposed to wear. So he shows up and, and all the, 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 the master of the household began to look over everybody and he finds the one person that didn't have the wedding clothes. And said, so what, what are you doing? You know, we're not going to be able to. You have to be able to go the distance, even when the delays come. I kind of feel, I, I wonder about the ones that are just looking for the rapture. Have you ever been in any kind of, um, some of the churches, that's their big thing. They can't wait for that rapture to come to get us out of here. Now, believe me, I would love for that to happen. Boom, all of a sudden we meet the Lord in the air and live happily ever after. But what if it doesn't come right now? You know, are you going to fall away when things get rough? But if, if we're dipped into the oil, it's just, it's his source. That's what was so amazing about your special today when you guys were singing and when we worship God. You know, we're just, we're, we're plugged in and we've got oil. Remember the old saying, got oil? That's what we need. As long as we have that oil and we just stay plugged in and, and dipped into it, we, we will, we will um, continue and be able to, to survive all these things. Realize, too, about wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Remember that scripture? I put that in, the, in, your, your, in your bulletin. Realize that God is holy. God is not cool. He's not your buddy. He's not, he, he doesn't just look the other way on things. God is holy, and we have to realize that he's holy, and we have to bow before him, and that's where the wisdom, remember this whole parable, are we going to be wise and be prepared and be plugged in and surrendered to God, or are we going to be foolish? Um, before that, I read that parable, we, we read those scriptures where it says that, that to, to, be, to be working, to be um, giving the, the servants of the household their, their, their food at the proper time. Then it says, but if that slave says in his heart, my master is not coming for a long time, and then he begins to beat the slaves and do all those things. And we have to surrender our schedule that was what i was going to preach on last week by the way good job kevin of course he's not here so i can't toot his horn but we have to we have to surrender all of our timetable this is all about god so so we need to if we say in our hearts oh he's not coming for a long time and then all that stuff that that then all the other stuff begins to come in Amen. Heavenly Father, where can we go but to you? Lord, in these times, may we turn our hearts to the source. Teach us to number our days, Lord, that we can present to you a heart of wisdom. Father, to realize that you are our source and that if we continue to, to know you and be known by you, we won't hear those awful words, depart from me because I never knew you. 
Let our hearts are known, Lord, known by you. Lord, may you bless your message to our hearts. May these words, Lord, go with us and encourage us and build us up. Thank you for allowing us to gather and encourage one another. In Jesus' name, amen. May